What's going on, moviegoers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Zero Productions. You guys, we're going to be doing something a little bit tad different on the channel with today's video. Usually, I would talk about one topic in each video, and you know, I would spread six to seven videos throughout the entirety of the week. But it seems like in one of my recent videos, why I explained why my, my why I feel like my channel is struggling. It seems like the general consensus is a lot of people want longer or lengthier videos. So in today's video, we're going to be talking a wide range of news topics that has dropped over the last course of the last three or four or five days. So hopefully you guys will, you know, like this kind of format. And, you know, if this format does particularly well on the channel, we'll proceed with how we handle things on the channel. But there's a lot of good stuff and a lot of things I am hyped about revolving around Marvel and DC, you guys. You know, especially with this month, James Gunn did announce that, you know, him and Peter Saffron are going to be doing a bunch of announcements of what their, you know, their 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 eight to five year plan or whatever length they have in store for their next couple of phases or the rebirth or reboot of the DCU, which I cannot wait for. Can't wait for that whole slate to be announced. Super stoked about that, you guys. But let's dive deep into it with today's first topic. Giancarlo Esposito, you guys. Now, this actor, phenomenal actor, one of my favorite actors, Do the Right Thing, one of my favorite films, Bugging Out, extremely talented, you guys. A lot of fans want to see him play either Magneto or Professor X in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But a lot of fans are like, well, wait a minute, what about Patrick Stewart? He was in Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. How would this kind of add up? Well, that was in a different universe. And Giancarlo Esposito actually talked about it. And he said he wants to play a good guy. He wants to play a good hero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And he's mentioned Professor X multiple times. So if Marvel Studios did decide to go down that route and, you know, race swap Professor X or even, you know, having Denzel Washington play, Ma I mean, Malcolm X, he did play Malcolm X, <laughs> to play uh, Magneto. That would be crazy, but it would be so freaking awesome to see Giancarlo Esposito and Denzel Washington as Professor X and Magneto in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Talk about a power move. But I don't think that Denzel would want to attach himself for a, a role like Magneto. And, you know, honestly, like, you, you, you want to get somebody who's a little bit more younger because there's going to be an eight-picture deal. Like, there's no way you had Denzel Washington as Magneto for one film, and that's it. Like, that's just, that just, it wouldn't work out. So, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with Giancarlo Esposito. He's already met with Marvel multiple times about, you know, particular roles. Maybe they haven't landed on anything. Maybe he already knows something, and they're waiting for the announcement at Comic-Con this year. Who knows? But I'm excited for whatever they have in store for Giancarlo Esposito, you guys. That is a huge get. Now, there's a rumor going around that Marvel Studios is starting up a new Disney Plus series, The Strange Academy, you guys, and Wong is going to be in the forefront of this series. I was like, oh, interesting, interesting. So, Comertaj and all the young, new talent they have there, and apparently, this is the rumor, that they want this to, it, it, they want it to come out before Avengers of the Kang Dynasty, and it will tie in to that movie significantly. I was like, very interesting. I mean, we all saw the end of Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, right? America Chavez is there. Maybe she gets some kind of mystical, magical powers doing something completely different from the comic book run. It could be a possibility. I mean, Wong is the source of Supreme, and he's been sprinkled out throughout this entire phase with Shang-Chi, and then he was in She-Hulk and Doctor Strange. So he's... He's, there's a reason why he's been sprinkled out. There's a reason why Wong has been so important to Phase 4, and I cannot wait to see the end game, no pun intended. But I'm really curious to see how that really plays out. But I was like, Strange Academy, that could be very, very interesting. Disney Plus series, obviously. Um, and then that could lead into like the Young Avengers, because I do feel like Avengers the Kang Dynasty will definitely have sort of the younger Avengers at the forefront of the team and then you know maybe halfway or you know in the third act you know the og avengers will come through or even or even maybe that could that because i do think that avengers the king dynasty and secret wars will be a one and two parter 
Because with Secret Wars, you're dealing with the multiverse. And Kang, you know, you're dealing with time. You're dealing with the... I mean, we are in literally the multiverse saga right now. So I definitely feel like those two stories will heavily connect. And then Avengers the Kang Dynasty will leave us with a massive cliffhanger, you guys. We're talking like a huge, huge cliffhanger. That would be so exciting. Like... The end of Avengers Infinity War. You remember that cliffhanger when everybody got dusted and the entire theater was just quiet and just literally just lost for words? I was just like, so that's it? And I was like, oh my God, it was so crazy, man. What an experience with Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. I'm really hoping that Avengers, you know, the Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars delivers like the last two Avengers film have. I mean, especially with the rumors going on that Hugh Jackman and Tobey Maguire will be fighting along each, along each other in Secret Wars. Oh my God. Secret Wars has the ability to be bigger than Avengers Endgame, you guys. I cannot wait for that film. It is going to be bonkers. Best believe deals are being signed right now. I mean, it's obvious because the script is being written right now. So best believe... The tenure of the, what, 25 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, not Marvel Cinematic Universe, sorry. The Marvel films of, like, you know, the earlier X-Men films or the Fantastic Four films. All those earlier actors are already probably in talks to, you know, appear or have a cameo appearance in Secret Wars. It is going to be so massive, you guys. I cannot wait. I'm super stoked. Also, we have another rumor, apparently. Moon Knight Season 2 will come out before Avengers Secret Wars. Look, I enjoyed Moon Knight. I did. I thought Oscar Isaac delivered one hell of a performance as, you know, as the character Moon Knight. He was really good. I really enjoyed what that character had to offer, what the introduction of this, this whole new world of introducing Moon Knight. I thought it was unique. It was refreshing. I liked the, the whole, you know, mental the mental health in those issues, how, you know, they really brought that up. Just like in the comic books, they didn't try to rewrite it. They didn't try to do something different. They really embraced the source material. And I, I thought it was really good. But I feel like, you know, the season finale was definitely a little bit of a, a, a letdown for me. I expected a little bit more. But I'm fine with that. Because Moon Knight is still going to be in the MCU. Moon Knight is going to be a part of the whole supernatural world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He's going to interact with Blade and Ghost Rider. Oh, there's a whole I want to talk about Ghost Rider because there's a very interesting actor who is interested in joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you guys. But we'll get to that later. And of course, Angela Bassett, you guys, has won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It, that was a no-brainer. She was absolutely astonishing. Her presence, her power, whenever she was speaking in front of the embassy, whenever she was just on the screen, she, she, she demanded your attention and she was so good. I'm so happy. That's the first time in the MCU any actor has won a Golden Globe. I can't wait. Hopefully she wins an Academy Award because that would be dope. Hopefully Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Gronson wins you know, best score at the Academy Awards. That would be amazing because I listen to that score all the time. It is phenomenal, you guys. But Black Panther, man, I mean, this that whole world is just known for winning awards. That first film got nominated, what, for like seven awards? I'm thinking it won three awards. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, Ryan Coogler and what he's doing is, is, is brilliant. I love what he did with Namor. I cannot wait to see what Disney Plus spinoffs he has for you know, the world of Wakanda and more world building. He is just golden. And if I'm Kevin Feige, nobody touches Dr. Doom but Ryan Coogler. That's just the way I feel, you guys. Speaking of Black Panther, Letitia Wright kind of teased that, you know, Black Panther 3 is kind of already in development. I was like, oh, that's a nice little tease. I think it's a little bit early, but I understand why they would want to push out the third film so fast. I mean, what, Black Panther... One came out 2018, and then the second film came out four years later. I can understand. Now, the second film didn't make as much money as the first film did. You can take into the accountability of saying, okay, it didn't have Chadwick Boseman. It didn't have the main star or, you know, what kind of forever. It didn't have the China box office. I understand. I get that. But in my eyes, Black Panther Wakanda Forever was still a huge, massive success. It made well over $800 million at the box office. You can't say that's a failure because that's a whole lot of money. Do you have $800 million in your, your bank account? 
No, <laughs> that is huge. So Wakanda Forever was definitely a, a success in my eyes. So whatever they do decide to do for Black Panther 3, you know, or introducing, you know, a, a whole new world and possibly, you know, aging T'Challa's son, T'Challa, that would be interesting because a lot of fans still want to see T'Challa as the Black Panther. I mean, it's still a possibility. We're dealing with Kang. We're dealing with the multiverse. We're dealing with time, you guys. Anything is possible. They could age up T'Challa and he could be somewhere in the age of like 18 and 21 in Black Panther 3 with the uh, the ramifications of, you know, Avengers the King Dynasty and Secret Wars. So there is a possibility, you guys, we could have T'Challa as Black Panther again, which would be super, super exciting. And like I said, Dr. Doom, Dr. Doom for Black Panther 3, please. <laughs> that would be so cool to see the whole world of Latveria. That would be so, so good. But like I stated with Moon Knight and Oscar Isaac, you guys, apparently Pedro Pascal is interested in joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I was like, oh, give him Robbie Reyes. I didn't have him be Ghost Rider. I didn't have Oscar Isaac. I didn't have Pedro Pascal in like a supernatural dark elements of this just terrifying world of the supernatural and have Moon Knight and Ghost Rider, Robbie Reyes, and, you know, Mark Spector. OMG, that would be a banger. You guys heard it here first. You heard it on the channel first that they are going to cast Pedro Pascal as Robbie Reyes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you guys are going to be blown away. You heard it here first, and Kevin Feige, if you're watching it, you're welcome. I'll take uh, I'll take a check, please. <laughs> but super, super, super exciting. Um, moving on, Deadpool three, you guys. So Hugh Jackman kind of teased what what the, the the title could possibly be, right? A lot of people think it's just going to be Deadpool three, but I don't think it's just going to be called Deadpool three. I mean, Hugh Jackman said Wolverine and Deadpool. I was like, oh, and then Ryan Reynolds did a video, you know, <laughs> kind of like under his breath saying Wolverine and Deadpool. I was like. So Deadpool 3 is basically going to be called Wolverine and Deadpool, which I like. And you have Wolverine at the forefront is even better. That's how you sell tickets because, you know, not your average moviegoer is going to know that, you know, in Deadpool 3, Wolverine's going to be in there. So if you attach Wolverine and Deadpool in the title, that could definitely help out the box office. And everybody's like, oh, what? Wolverine's coming back? This is crazy. This is massive. Because let's believe you guys, look. There are still some people who do live under a rock, who still don't know the ins and outs of what's happening in phase four, phase five, no, sorry, phase five and phase six. So it's going to be definitely surprising to them. They're like, Wolverine's going to be in this? This is crazy. Wolverine and Deadpool film? Who's playing Wolverine? Oh my God, Hugh Jackman? Banger. Cannot wait, you guys. Wolverine and Deadpool is going to be such a phenomenal film. I know they're cooking up something great with Sean Levy. You know it's going to be a fucking phenomenon. In that movie, it is going to be so much fun. Ryan Reynolds, I cannot wait for that film, you guys. Ah, oh, God, that's going to be so much fun. Um, the Batman. Matt Reeves has confirmed that he is currently working on the script for The Batman 2. Now, if you know Matt Reeves and you know his style of storytelling, you, you understand that it's a process. He, it's all about character. It's all about story. And action comes last. And I'm fine with that because The Batman was phenomenal. I love that it was a noir detective film first other than anything. And it worked. It was so well made. So well made. And then Matt Reeves actually just confirmed, you guys, that he's meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran this month to talk DC. Now, you guys, I do believe, I do, and I'm wholeheartedly believing that The Batman and that universe will definitely be incorporated in what James Gunn and Peter Safran are doing. So the Batman will be a part of the DCU. And I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that because it would just create a problem if they had to do a whole new Batman and to, to do two separate Batman films. I don't want that. Robert Pattinson as Batman is mm, 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 pizza chef. He's really good. And imagine with a younger Superman. Oh my God, that would be amazing. So I'm definitely calling you guys. The Batman universe will be a part of the DCU. I know it will be. I know it. I just have this feeling. I have this feeling. And with what Peter Safran and James Gunn are pitching to Matt Reeves and what they've already talked about, it seems like Matt Reeves is on board. And he's like, okay, well, we can do this now because, you know, with the whole Snyderverse and it just got complicated. So they're rebooting all of that, getting rid of all of it and starting fresh. And it could fit in a co cohesive universe with Matt Reeves, the Batman. It could work, you guys. 
and I'm excited about it. Moving on, Ant-Man 3 will apparently be just as important and integral as the, into, in, in the future of the MCU, just as Civil War was. Because Civil War was massively important. I don't think people really overlook Civil War. If Civil War didn't happen and the Soviet Accords never happened, they probably wouldn't beat Thanos because the Avengers wouldn't have been disassembled. It was so important to the MCU at the time. So important. No Civil War, no Baron Zemo. Guess what? Thanos doesn't win the first time. Best believe that because everybody would have been together. Steve, Iron Man, Spider-Man, you know, Wanda, everybody. Vision, things would have happened so differently if Civil War didn't happen and disassemble the Avengers, you guys. Look, I'm excited for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I cannot wait. I don't know what's going to happen. Will Ant-Man die? Who knows? Kang looks like a badass in that last trailer. MODOK, you got, you know, Corey Stoll. I'm so stoked for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumadium. I cannot wait, you guys. I am so hyped. Hopefully tickets go on soon in the next week or so because I'm going, that's a day one. That's a day one for me and you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium is something you don't want to miss. This film was going to be so important. It's going to be, you know, pivotal to, you know, the Kang Dynasty and, you know, Avengers Secret Wars, you know, because Kang, you guys, it's Kang! It's Kang! It's Jonathan Majors, baby! And Jonathan Majors is having a big year. Huge year, and I'm so happy for him. Um, HBO Max, you guys. I have HBO Max. I canceled it, like, a month ago because I was like, I just don't use it. What's the point of this? And then I found out The Last of Us is dropping next week. And I was like, okay, let me let me restart my membership. Why not? But, man, $14.99 for the membership is kind of pricey. But as of today, you guys, they just announced they're increasing it a dollar to $15.99 a month. I'm like, yo, come on, dog. Y'all, 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 it's, it's a little bit much. I mean, we already have so many streaming services. We do. You know, from Disney Plus to Hulu to Netflix to Amazon Prime to Peacock. It's a lot. And there's just like, if you're going to, you know, increase the price, can, then can you put out more exclusive content on HBO Max? Like a lot more content. If, you know, you're going to be charging your subscribers $15.99 a month. Come on, man. Come on. It's, 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 it's ridiculous, you guys. And, you know, like I said, I'll still keep it because, you know, there's still a bunch of shit I want to watch. Like The Last of Us, I'm really excited about that and whatever exclusive stuff they have. House of the Dragon season two, you know, definitely waiting for that. Oh, I cannot wait. But Ezra Miller, you guys, Ezra Miller, we all know the, the problems that he's been involved in and we all know the issues. We all know what's going on with him. Apparently, he pleads guilty. He pleads guilty to the charges. And, you know, this is, you know, him doing it to avoid any jail time. Now, look, Ezra Miller is trying to get help. He's trying to do better. And I appreciate and I understand that. But what harm you have caused, there has to be some kind of you know, consequences. There has to be. So with the whole reboot of the DCU, I do think that they should shovel him and get rid of him. But according to these reports, not too long ago, a couple of the WB execs want Ezra Miller to stay on. I was like, what is wrong with you? Why would you want that? That's not okay. It's not. It's not. Will Smith slapped somebody. And unfortunately, you know, I don't promote violence, but he slapped somebody and he gets canceled like that. Like that. I was like, Ezra Miller can just terrorize a whole family and, you know, all the crazy reports that is going on. I was like, this is just bonkers. It makes no sense to me. So there's a lot of issues there. But ultimately, it will be up to James Gunn. It will be up to Peter Saffron on what they want to do with The Flash. I do think that that entire thing is going to be rebooted. So Ezra Miller will probably be the, probably be the Flash one last time and The Flash film this year. And that's a wrap. And we move on from there. And we look forward to whatever brand new, hope, hopeful, bright, you know, cohesive universe they have in store. Because you know it's going to be great. I, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to get away from the Snyderverse. I'm really excited to do something completely and totally different in the world of the DCU, you guys. Really stoked. But post your comments down below, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about these massive topics we talked about. Thoughts and opinions. And let me know if you like this format. Do you want me to just to save all the topics and do one lengthy video at the end of the day? Or at the end of the week? Please, post your comments down below and let me know what you guys think. Peace.